our second such an event. The event is um, what we are. Civilization, culture is built by people. And we who come from India, we see this massive expression of people's voice. Various regions, various tribes, various communities, religions, people speak. The ancestry of such speaking has not been analyzed. When did language begin? When did first man made his when did the first man made his rhyme? What was the rhyme for? Love or for food or for sky? So we wondered. We are a group called South Asian Poets of New England, formed some 25 years ago. So we decided that we will start something called a folk literature and oral poetry festival. So 20, 2021, some of us with a few other friends, um, we did this festival. We had associations with uh, German, French, Hungarian, Cambodian, Spanish, um, Indian groups. This year, then, however, we could not continue because of the pandemic. So this year, we are given a grant. And with that grant, we have assembled here. But then, what happened is the people that we wanted to assemble. They're not inclined for an in-person meeting. This whole electronic process has engaged people. They want to do remotely. What we felt there is no folk literature unless people knew. So I'm grateful that you're all here, whatever form, that we can be people, people of the world people from different corners of the world. Now when you say people different corners of the world, actually that's not the case here. Because after we did not find much participation, in-person participation, so we tried to confine it to the Indian subcontinent. Until yesterday, Somebody reached out to me, said that I'm a poet, I'm a Chinese, and I want to participate. So that kind of linkage, the poets speak their own language, wherever they are, they reach out. So I reached out to her, and she's here. So she will start the program today with a little introduction on Chinese folk literature. Her name is uh, Dr. Chun Yu. So will you have Lord Dr. Chun Yu to do our first presentation? Thank you so much, Bijoy. And uh, it's a surprise to myself. I used to live in Cambridge um, at Central Square. I um, studied science here. But then I become a bilingual poet. And so it's quite a journey. I started here venture to the West Coast and come back here. And then the Ch Greater Chinese, um, uh, Greater Boston Chinese uh, Culture Association um, discovered I, I was in town. So the director forwarded me this info and I postponed my trip and so I can do this. Right. It, it's really an uh, honor to be here. Um, to, this is a great way to reconnect to this town I really, and this region. I really love, and uh, so uh, uh, I just started preparing this last night. Um, so I believe, uh, I mean, I think it's a case, all literature um, started, the folk literature is the mother for all literature all around the world. 
And the all poetry began with oral poetry. And um, it's in our blood, it's undeniable in, in our blood. In China, it's certainly the case. We have um, folk literature for thousands of years and uh, also poetry history for, for thousands of years. And uh, the great amazing thing in Chinese culture is now I open a book of poetry with poems from 3,000 years ago, I can, I can understand it. It's such a direct connection. I think it's hard to find another case um, for other culture um, to have such a strong connection. And also poetry is such a major driving force for Chinese culture. And um, I think maybe you can also resonate sometimes the matter of poetry is a matter of life and death for individuals, but also is a matter of the survival or uni unification of a country. So we have many, many cases um, there. And also all of the folk literature and oral poetry made it to our daily life today. And Chinese have this special thing called um, called Chen Yu. Um, it can translate it as Chinese like idioms or something like that. So it's used every day by kids from kindergarten to, to 80, 90 year old um, grandma, grandpas. Um, and these like often it's four characters. They contain stories of entire stories of, from folk literature, from myths, all from a poem. And uh, it's, it's just used in our daily life and could be used to describe a situation that we are going through or a big or a, maybe a grand epic situation of the country. Um, so, um, so I have a great sense of feeling of connection um, being in that language, but also I'm a bilingual poet. I write poetry from both languages. It's hard to predict. Sometimes Chinese, sometimes English. And then I finish, when I finish, I translate the poem into the other language. And many of you probably understand it very well how challenging it is to translate such poetry, especially when I write in Chinese. And I use some of the you know, folk literature, like maybe just a two, two words, right? But all four words, that, but that carries so much behind it. The challenge is how can I make people understand? How can I convey that in English? So it's often a struggle. I just struggle and struggle. All of a sudden, one day, I find the right word uh, or right words. Often, maybe it's a simple word, but somehow it, it carries through. So I know I need to give an example of a folk, uh, uh, not uh, a poem, right, uh, from, from ancient times. So maybe go to another slide. So this is our poet Li Bai, uh, the, the most famous Chinese poet from Tang Dynasty. He has this very simple poem, like every, everybody in China can recite. It's four lines, and it's, it has a childlike, very naive quality, but somehow we just love it. So I read it, and I, maybe I talk about why this poem is so long-lasting. Long so I read it in Chinese first. Jing Ye Si, Li Bai. Chuang Qian Ming Yue Guang, Yi Shi Di Shang Shuang. Ju Tou Wang Ming Yue, Di Tou Si Gu Xiang. Quiet night's thought. In front of my bed, the bright moonlight, I suspect it is frost on the ground. I raise my head to gaze at the bright moon and the Lord thinking of my hometown. And how many of you have done that? Somehow the moon, when we venture out, our ho out of our hometown or home country, 
it never somehow looks the same. I think I heard many people, you look at the moon, you say, oh, is this the same moon? So for a Chinese person, I often joke, when we look at the moon, we don't just see the moon, we see layers of poetry between the moon and us, because it's so, so much written about. And um, yeah, so this is one example. Also, Chinese poems from ancient times were always sung. So the, the most important poetry book, it's one of the five Chinese classics, uh, Shi Jing, which can be translated as book of poems or book of songs. They were actually, they were meant to be sung. And uh, like a hundred some, uh, Allegedly, Confucius compiled and edited this book. And 100, about 165 of those poems were folk songs. And this collection so deeply influenced the future poets from then on, which is 2,500, some, around you know, 2,000 some years ago. And so from, from this simple poem, you can, you can still sense it. Um, so, could you, could we go to that? Yeah, so this is my first book. So under such influence, I wrote my first book in verse because I couldn't write it in prose. It didn't f like flow in the normal, normal, so-called normal like narrative. And once I started writing it, in verse, somehow it just magically flew. And next slide, please. And then, you know, I'm continuing to write, this is a newer publication by Arian Press um, of San Francisco, their legendary press. And so the tradition continues, even with American press. Please go on. So they published the poem both in English and Chinese. And as a broadside, they dedicated to the 2021 graduates of the year and all people who endured the pandemic. And I wrote this for my parents, but people were so separate from their loved ones. So every time people read it, they cry. Actually, Arian Press established a web page just for people from all around the world who are willing to record the poem in English and in Chinese. So poetry for me is a spoken it's spoken tradition, it's oral tradition, it never has stopped. So, please go on. Um, so I actually find this uh, video, so, which is about this folk song called um, Jasmine Flower. It's from my region, Jiangsu province. This is probably one of the most performed um, piece of folk song or folk music around the world. So first it was in the opera, Torando. Um, so it's a, a whole, the first act has, has this, uh, has, has the music of the jasmine flower. And then it's often sang by different choruses. And this, uh, if we can click on the video. Yeah. So this is, a, this video is a collaboration between Suzhou Symphony and another symphony here. Can, yeah. Open, yeah. And we can see they are reciting lines of Chinese poetry throughout the time from Tang Dynasty. And then they will sing this song. <laughs> it's a very international group. I'm so proud. I mean, they speak such good Chinese.
all together. <laughs> Thank you. That, that ends my presentation. Thank you. Next presentation would be by Mr. Sajid Kamal, poet and educator. He'll be telling us about bowels of Bengal. Thank you, Rita. And thank you, Dr. Chun, for your very engaging and educating and so as illuminating presentation. And welcome to Boston, Cambridge, part of Greater Boston. I also want to thank um, the, all of you for being here. There could be a million and a half reasons to be somewhere else. It's a nice day. Um, but, but the fact that you made the time to be here, um, thank you very much. I want to also uh, thank the people uh, from Sapne who are here as well as not here for doing this for over the over many many years really and so thank you I want to thank Cambridge Public Library for hosting as well as uh, Cambridge Cultural Council I think for uh, providing support to this event so um, I will um, share my, some of my thoughts and reflection on the bowels of Bengal so what uh, first day a uh, few uh, sentences about what the bowels are, what has been, what are some of the things I wanted to share with you about, about them. And at the same time, um, a um, original song poem in Bangla, I'll recite that, uh, followed by my own translation of it. So this is Bowels of Bengal. I call it a timeless tradition. Bowels are a community of wandering singers, poets, and musicians, bards, minstrels, mendicants, mystics, who have adorned villages and city streets of Bengal, both East Bengal, which is now Bangladesh, and West Bengal, which is in India, and to a degree, Tripura and Assam, for centuries. Men and women, some are ascetics, and some live family lives. Long flourishing as an oral tradition, their language is Bangla. As with many folk tradition, popular, though popular among common people, bowels, which meanings ascribed to them, such as madcaps and restless, did not always have the due acknowledgement among the established hierarchical, even snobbish, sociocultural order. Poet Guru Rabindranath Tagore changed all that. Recalling his encounter with the depth and breadth of bowel philosophy and thoughts, Ago wrote, one day I chanced to hear a song from a beggar belonging to the Baal sect of Bengal. What struck me in this simple song was a religious expression that was neither grossly concrete, full of crude details, nor metaphysical in its, in its rarefied transcendentalism. At the same time, it was alive with an emotional sincerity. It spoke of an intense yearning of the heart for the divine, which is in man and not in the temple or scriptures, in images or symbols. I sought to understand them through their songs, which is their only form of worship. Inspired, Tagore promoted and patronized celebration and documentation of Baal songs, which led to the establishment of Baal literature as a significant dimension of the rich and wide variety, wide, di widely diverse Bengali literary and cultural tradition. In turn, he acknowledged being influenced by Baal songs and philosophy in his own thoughts, compositions, and writings. Tagore even created a Baal character and himself acted in his dance drama, Falguni, which means offspring. Tagore's nephew and painter, Abonindra Tagore, painted him in that role, immortalizing the image of dancing Tagore as Baal Rabindranath. Thanks to Allen Ginsberg, the Baal struck a chord with the soul-searching countercultural movement of the 60s in the USA. A Baal troupe led by Purnachandra Das Baal, later revered as the Baal Shamrat, was invited to Summer of Love Music Festival in San Francisco, San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury in 1967. Following the festival, the troupe toured the country, performing at different places, all the way to Woodstock, New York, which would become famous for the Woodstock Music and Art Fair 
in the summer of 1969. Before San Francisco and since, Purnodash has toured the world, also having met and collaborated with musical icons such as Bob Dylan and Mick Jagger. Through the legendary contribution of Purnodash and contributions from other bowels, combined with numerous recordings, translations, research, books, films, and other documentation, street singing as well as sold out concerts, the bowel influence and tradition continue to spread throughout the world. Recognition of, bowel, of the bowels also spread when in 2005, UNESCO included the bowel genre of songs of Bangladesh in its list of masterpieces of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. Several themes run through the bowel, through bowel songs, self-knowledge, mystical search for and devotion to the creator, the formless Monel Manush, man of the heart, or man within the heart, body mystery, spirit body, unity, non-hierarchical and egalitarian existence, freedom of thought and heart, quest for the ultimate knowledge. Many of their song poems are characterized by radical unorthodoxy and striving for universal spiritual unity and inner freedom. Evolving as a non-sectarian blend of Sufism in Islam and Vaishnavism in Hindu tradition, that their roots are traceable to the Charjapadas, the Buddhist mystical song composed between 950 AD to 1150 AD, considered the earliest specimen of Bangla literature available to, the, uh, to this date, which sought spiritual liberation through Shahajiya, which is a simple path. The most known of the, ba most known of the ba ba Baul is Lalon Shah, or Lalon Pokir. He lived between 1774 and 1890. Among other bowels is Modern, who assumed to have lived during the latter part of the 19th century. I will read a song poem by Modern, first in the original Bangla, then in my own translation into English. Composed over a century ago, the song poem's critical relevance to our time, characterized by divisions, hostility, and religious fanaticism, cannot be exaggerated. Its message is both fresh and urgent. So here's the original in Bangla. Tomar padhaka se mandire morjide, oto dakshuni shai cholte na pai. Amay rukhe darai guru te murshide, dibba jate ango juraye, tatei jodi jagat puraye, balto guru kothaye darai, tomar abhet sadhan morlo bhede. Tor duare nanan tala, Puran Kuran Toshbi Mala, Bhed Patito Putan Jala, Kinda Morum, Modern More Kede. And this is the translation. The path to you is blocked by temples and mosques. I hear your call, O Lord, yet I cannot come. Gurus and perceptors block my way. If that which is cool the body, which cools the body, also sets the world afire. Tell me, my Lord, where should I stand? My devotion to unity is dying of divisions. All kinds of locks hang on your door. The Puranas, the Quran, the rosary beads. The most anguishing is this path of divisions. Modern cries to death and regret. Thank you. Amazing so to introduce us to Bengali Bowls. Next is Mr. Parmeet Kumar Singh, poet and scientist. He will be taking us to Bhojpuri folk songs. Hello everyone. Uh, so I'm Parmit Kumar Singh. I'm from Bihar and we speak Bhojpuri. And uh, next slide. So you can see the current map of Bihar, right side. And the four historical figures you are seeing from right to left is Lord Buddha and Arivat who invented uh, Jiro 
and then the first president of Bihar, Rajendra Prasad, and the Batsayan who wrote the famous book Kama Sutra. So all of them were from Bihar and we speak Bhojpuri. So today I am presenting the Bhojpuri folk song which is very old. And so the title of presentation is Buddhs to Batsa and Bhojpuri Beyond Boundaries. So the title next yeah. The title of the folk song is Kaise Bani, Kaise Bani, Fulauri Bina Chatni Kaise Bani, meaning how the fulauri will be made without chutney. The, but the message is that how fulauri will be tasty without chutney. And fulauri is a Bhojpuri dish made of pulses and chutney is the paste of coriander and uh, garlic or onion. So to have the taste you need both. This is the part of, it has been part of our life like I am from farmer family. So during the harvesting or seeding or even for cooking we generally sing and this is such a old that we have lost the original lyrics but still it is the part of our life daily wise so there are different versions existing. The first time this song became popular when the Tradinian singer Sundar Popo used in his album Nana Nani 1969 and then the Bollywood catch it by Ananji Kalyanji brother and recreated and then Usa Mangeskar also used the modified version. So today I am going to sing this. I am not a singer but I will enjoy this. Yeah, next one. And even in the Dabang too recently this song was there. So, and this is our traditional cloth. We always keep it this gamcha yeah, during the farming and seeding. So, hopefully. Kaise bani, kaise bani, kaise bani ho raja, kaise bani, fulauri bina chatani, kaise bani, fulauri bina chatani, kaise bani. Kaise bani, kaise bani, phulauri bina chatani, kaise bani. So how the phulauri will be made without the chatani. The partner will sing, which is the next stanza. Khubnu bani ho rani, khubnu bani. Khubnu bani ho rani, khubnu bani. जे संग तू हूँ पिसब त खूब नु बनी जे रोज रोज चखब त खूब नु बनी द मीनिंग इज दैट इफ माय क्वीन इफ यू आर गोइंग टू मेक इट एंड इफ यू आर गोइंग टू मेक एवरी डे देन डेफिनेटली इट विल बी टेस्टी द नेक्स्ट स्टेंजा इज कैसे सो भी कैसे सो भी कैसे सो भी हो राजा कैसे सो भी कोयल बिना बगिया कैसे सो भी कोयल बिना बगिया कैसे सो भी कैसे सो भी हो राजा कैसे सो भी कोयल बिना बगिया कैसे सो भी सो हाउ द गार्डन विल बी ब्यूटीफुल विदाउट द कुकू और द कोयल एंड देन द पार्टनर इज सिंगिंग खुबनु सो भी हो रानी खुबनु सो भी खुबनु सो भी हो रानी खुबनु सो भी जे संग तू गई बुता खुबनु सो भी जे रोज रोज चहका बुता खुबनु सो भी जे संग तू हूँ गई बुता खुबनु सो भी जे रोज रोज चहका बुता खुबनु सो भी the meaning is that, oh my partner, if you are with me and if you are singing and we are together, then the garden will be beautiful. We don't need the quail. The last one is, the last one was used by Usa Mangeshkar also in some Bollywood movie. So that is, Kaise kati, kaise kati, कैसे कटी हो राजा कैसे कटी राजाई बिना रतिया कैसे कटी राजाई बिना रतिया कैसे कटी कैसे कटी हो राजा कैसे कटी राजाई बिना रतिया खूब नो कटी राजाई बिना रतिया कैसे कटी 
खुबनू कटी हो रानी खुबनू कटी खुबनू कटी हो रानी खुबनू कटी जे संग तू रह खुबनू कटी जे रखबू एक खटी आत खुबनू कटी खुबनू कटी हो रानी खुबनू कटी जे संग तू रह खुबनू कटी द ट्रांसलेशन इज दैट इफ वी आर टुगेदर it doesn't matter how cold the night is in winter or how bad our situation the night will be beautiful the night will be warm and we will enjoy so that's the meaning of this whole song and i'm really thankful to bijay ji and the organizer because first time i'm singing the song which i have been enjoying in my house during my childhood my father my grandfather my sister in laws everyone actually used this during our gathering so thanks a lot and uh, thank you very much for everyone thank you so very much to bring back myself my hometown because i'm from mirzapur from the bhojpuri region next state from where uh, mr singh is from bihar and mirzapur is same so this is the kind of uh, songs folk songs i grew up with so thank you thank you thank you Now we have Mr. Manish Srivastava, poet and uh, entrepreneur. He is going to sing Kajri, another very famous song from Mirzapur region. So thank you, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Vijay ji. Thank you, Sabne team. And I want to thank. Uh, Chandu bhai was not here but he is here in the spirit um i cannot imagine any of these events without him uh <clears throat> so um my presentation here is uh, the state of uttar pradesh um in india if you put the previous slide so what i am showing here is so uttar pradesh uh, primarily people speak hindi but hindi has several dialects several dialects they say you know every 50 100 kilometers the dialect of hindi changes so it has um, you know khadi boli bridge avadhi bundelkhandi um many other local dialects uh, i belong to a city called kanpur in the central up and we speak avadhi there so the song i am going to present kajri is mostly Uh, sung in avadhi dialect or bhojpuri which bhojpuri in bihar eastern up and bihar and uh, avadhi is like central up towards the uh, eastern up now kajri they say it's mostly the researchers have said that kajri was originated in mirzapur uh, and then it flourished in the eastern up and bihar and people sing um in different dialects and languages kajri is nothing but if you can go to the next slide so before i go to kajri these are um some famous poets and writers in the urdu uh, in in avadhi dialects so gosami tulsidas who uh, wrote ramcharit manas uh, narottam das malik mohammad jaisi padmavat he he wrote um rambhadra charya suksagar he wrote Uh, Ramai Kaka is very famous in in Avadhi dialect. So, Rafiq Shadani is one um, uh, Urdu poet. He he wrote like uh, comical satires in Urdu. They also call it Hazl or Hazl, like Ghazl. It is Hazl. Um, if you go to the next slide now, I come to Kajri. So Kajri, as you can see, you know, I've tried to uh, jot it down in bullet points. um the but the main thing is the kajri is a song of separation and love it is by um you know by a woman or it can be by men also by a woman uh, to his beloved when he is not with her or him in the season of monsoon that is very specific uh, to kajri that uh, it's also has uh, musicality and the sensuality as well uh, when there is a rain and i'm missing you and then it's it's basically that's the theme of the song 
in any Kajri songs. Um, as I said, it's mostly written in Avadi, Maithili, or Bhushpuri. Maithili is another dialect in, in Bihar. Um, the word Kajri refers to Kajal or coal, uh, which is um, symbolizing the dark color of storm, storm clouds. Um, they also say Kaj, ka, Kare Badra or you know, Kajarava in those dialects. So if you go to the next slide. So this is a Kajri, uh, not from a poet. This Kajri I tried to write and I tried to put a tune to it. So I'm trying to sing this Kajri, which I had written um, a couple of years ago. <coughs> So I'll give a context, I'll also read the translation, but the context is um, a lady is talking to her sister-in-law uh, because the husband is um, gone for work and it's a monsoon season and he's not here and she's talking to uh, her sister-in-law that your brother is not here and I'm missing him. <clears throat> दीदिया कहाँ सजन हुई है बिकट अकेली रात दीदिया कहाँ सजन हुई है Where is my beloved sister? Where is my beloved? The night is terribly lonely. Where is my beloved sister? घेरी घेरी आए कारे बदरा घिर घिर आए कारे बदरा जिया माउन की आस दीदिया कहाँ सजनवा हुई है दीदिया कहाँ सजनवा हुई है The dark clouds gather and surround. Dark clouds gather and surround. My heart longs for him. Where is my beloved sister? Where is my beloved? झूला पड़ी गए अंगना पी के झूला पड़ी गए अंगना पी के हमरे करजवा मफास दीदिया कहाँ सजनवा हुई है दीदिया कहाँ सजनवा हुई है so Jhula is swing and swing is very symbolic to rainy season and and monsoon in India um, it's a nice uh, weather and you know people like to swing outside so that's very symbolic to monsoon so what she's saying is a swing has been hung in the courtyard of my in-laws and uh, it feels like a thorn in my heart where is my beloved sister where is my beloved आवन कही गए अब हुनाए आवन कही गए अब हुनाए जिया माट की सांस दीदिया कहाँ सजनवा हुई है दीदिया कहाँ सजनवा हुई है निकट अकेली रात दीदिया कहाँ सजनवा हुई है सो ही प्रॉमिस टू कम बट स्टिल हैजेंट अराइव्ड ही हैज प्रॉमिस टू कम बट ही हैज स्टिल नॉट अराइव्ड माय ब्रेथ इज कॉट इन माय चेस्ट वेयर इज माय बिलव्ड सिस्टर वेयर इज माय बिलव्ड दैट्स that was Kajri for you. Thank you. Wow, that was awesome. That's amazing. So now we will go to Punjab region. Miss Nina Bahi, poet and teacher, will sing a tappa, Punjabi folk song. Thank you, Manish. Punjab, uh, <laughs> Kanpur is also my hometown. I'm born, raised, and educated from Kanpur. Um, and thank you to all my Sapne group. Thank you to Rita Ji for facilitating the program. And uh, today I'm gonna talk about Punjab, my homeland. So, yeah. as you guys know, this is Punjab before partition. So Punjab is the land of five rivers, Satlaj Ravi, Bees and Chenab and Jhelum. The region is rich in culture, dance, literature, festival, and food. 
Most of you have heard about the Bhangra and Giddha. These are very popular dances of Punjab. And more traditional folk music includes, can you the next slide, please? So, folk music includes Tappe, Giddha, Tappe, um, and uh, Tappe, Bolia, Dola, and so many other things. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about tappe. Tappe are sung during the weddings and family gatherings. And actually tappe, they started uh, folk songs by the camel riders. And they were based, uh, the theme was based on the tragic uh, love stories of Heer and Raja. Uh, and later on it was developed into a classical uh, form by uh, by Shori Mia. Shori Mia was a uh, singer at the Ashrafadullah, uh, the Nawab of Awadh. So he developed it further into classical and some of the tappas are, uh, have a philosophical meaning also. So the lyrics of tappa are uh, generally in Punjabi and in Sindhi language and they are based on ragas, Tumri, Kamaj, and mostly the most important is its, uh, uh, the essence is the love story of Hiranja. And the tapas are, when they are gathered in the festivals, they, their new families are joining together. So they create the tapa so that they're teasing each other by making the tapas like sometimes tapas are shrewd and sometimes it challenge the established heteronormative order of the family. So that brings the people actually closer by creating fun and little bit of teasing. So my tapas are based, you can do the next slide, please. So it's the conversation between a lover and the beloved. Interestingly, the lover is the girl. But in Urdu, it's just in Urdu and Shakespeare, so it's, it's opposite. The lover is a man. So the girl is asking the boy to visit her secretly. And she teases him and, and uh, for his looks and raises philosophical questions about his modality and need for friends, etc. So actually, I have uh, five tapas. So what I'm going to do is, this is the tapas and I can uh, sing one tapa and then I can give the translation, then one by one. one. Uh, so the first first one is, Kothe te mahiya, Kothe te mahiya, Mil na te mil mahiya, Nei te khas manukha mahiya, Kothe te mahiya. The girl is calling the boy to the roof. And she's saying, if you're not going, coming, go to the, go to hell. It's not translation, but it's meaning of the. So the boy is replying. Dar lag dae chitra to, dar lag dae chitra to. The boy is replying that he is ready to come to meet meet her, but he is scared that the, he will be greeted by shoes of his, her brother. <laughs> so the next one is, to see, to see pede pede ho, to see pede pede ho. कुछ ते शर्म करो तिया पुत्रा वाले हो कुछ ते शर्म करो तिया पुत्रा वाले she is telling her that you you are not looking you you, are, you don't have very good look and uh, uh, since you have children so you should have little bit of shame so he is saying ए सारे दंद कटने पे वे ऐथे सारे दंद कटने पे वे असी तनु चंगे लगने वा सडे तिया पुत्र वड देने 
सो ही सेइंग दैट ये यहाँ सब लोग हंस रहे हैं कि आप मेरा मजाक उड़ा रहे हैं सब लोग हंस रहे हैं तो मैं मैं तो आपको अच्छा लगता हूँ लेकिन मेरे बच्चे आपको अच्छे नहीं लगते क्या देन द नेक्स्ट वन इज एथे प्यार दे कुछ कोई ना एथे प्यार दे कुछ कोई ना तेरे नाल नहीं बोलना तेरे मुझ कोई ना तेरे मुझ कोई ना सो शी शी सेंग देर इज नो रिस्पेक्ट फॉर लव हेयर एंड आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू टॉक टू यू बिकॉज यू डोंट हैव अच सो ही सिंग मजा प्यार दख लांगे मजा प्यार दख लांगे जो तेरा हुक्म हो ते असी दाढ़ी भी रख लांगे सो द बॉय सिंग दैट आई कैन कम एंड टेस्ट लव विद यू इफ यू कमांड मी आई कैन Grow, grow beard instead of mustache. I'm asking. I can even grow beard. So the next one is. Baage vich aaya karo, baage vich aaya karo. Jadi asi soh jaiye, tu si makhiya udaya karo. Jado asi soh jaiye, tu si makhiya udaya karo. so the girl is inviting him to the garden she saying come to the garden and when i am asleep you can fly the flies away so what he is saying tusi roz nahaya karo tusi roz nahaya karo makhiya to dar lagda hai te gud thoda खाया करो मखियाँ तो डर लगता है ते गुड़ थोड़ा खाया करो सो ही रिप्लाइंग दैट यू टेक शावर एवरी डे एंड इफ यू आर स्केर्ड ऑफ फ्लाइज इट लेस जैगरी सो द लास्ट वन इज डुएट दे आर फाइनली पैच अप एंड दे आर सिंगिंग एंड स्विंगिंग ऑन द स्विंग पींग प्यार दी पावांगे असी पींग प्यार दी पावांगे असी हुन असी मिल गया हुन असी मिल गया ते गीत प्यार दे गावांगे हुन असी मिल गया ते पींग प्यार दी गावांगे असी रोज नहावांगे असी रोज नहावांगे सो नाउ दे आर पैच अप आफ्टर फाइटिंग सो दे आर सेइंग दैट वी विल स्विंग वी विल स्विंग ऑन द स्विंग ऑफ लव टुगेदर बिकॉज वी आर टुगेदर नाउ एंड वी विल सिंग द सॉन्ग्स ऑफ लव टुगेदर प्लस वी विल टेक शावर एवरी डे थैंक यू That was it, ladies. Thank you, Nina Ji. Next, we will go to a different region in India, Gujarat. Mr. Jayan Dave, poet and teacher, will take us there. <coughs> uh, my name is Jayan Dave. I'm from Gujarat, uh, and the language for Gujarat is Gujarati, which is the western part of uh, India. which is uh, to understand the folk song probably we have to also understand where it comes from or why it became so popular and why it captured the heart of so many people uh, because gujarat is uh, probably represent a lot of states of india gujarat has part of that um, it has a very much modern advance from thinking to development to business to at the same time it clings to the past and so you can see that how they balance uh, i'm giving an example when i was in ahmedabad 
a few years back, uh, walking on a street which is like a Fifth Avenue of New York, beautiful shops and expensive shopping there and beautiful buildings, very modern architect showroom. In front of that, there's an elephant passing by. And there comes a Mercedes, it takes over the elephant. So there is a very kind of contrast, contradictory things you can see. It's, it's right part, there's part of a sea, beautiful ocean, part of that. Uh, there is a rocks, kind of land like a New Hampshire. Uh, so it, it brings that, but there are also different part has a different variation. Even within the Gujarat, there is a different culture. There are tribes called Bil, there is a Adivasi. Uh, there are different uh, in Kachi, there's a Kachiabad, and each one has their own tradition. They have a pride in what they do. Uh, out of that, the one, the folk becomes, because it becomes, it tells people their own story and that's why it stays and then is captured by the people and then they take on and on and on to the generation. So this song even was written, nobody knows who wrote it, but it has become part of uh, Gujarat culture and uh, there is the longest night, uh, nine nights dancing festival in the world. It is called Navratri. And you will see this song is also given as traditional. Also, it's danced, which is called Garba, which has a four bits, and uh, there are three claps, Tin Tali, they call it. Um, so th that is, uh, the name is uh, Mare Modle, Mare Todle Bethore, Mor Kya Mole. This is, uh, I have to get it here. Mare Todle Bethore, Mor Kya Mole, means, just for a second, thank you. means why does a peacock perch on the door peg in front of my house? Mare todle bethore mor kya bole? This is the story about a young girl. Her beloved is away. And every time this peacock, when it sings, or cry, it reminds her of that pain of separation. And uh, and peacock is, is a national bird. Uh, it's a part of many folk songs of Gujarat, as well as in paintings, embroidery, cloth, uh, even the villages where the it's a clay houses they built in villages outside the wall they are also painting of peacock so peacock is a very much part of their life and when the peacock perch on the door peg when it cries that aggravates the pain of separation for this young girl. And so now she starts complaining about the same time, you know, she loves that pain. She says, why are you are giving me more pain? That she's talking about the peacock. But at the same time, she enjoys that pain through her different ornaments she's wearing. So she wears Tika, she has a bangle, 
she has anklets so she, that's the one she gets the peacock kind of embroidered into all this uh, thing so that's the song called mare torle bethore mor kya bole i'm going to give a little way that it is saying now this particular style is also they call duha the first one is like a statement that's the way and then the duha has the way of singing is different and then the the real song starts where the people starts dancing with that i will just give you a little translation of in english first so we can follow that song very easily he says o peacock don't cry don't cry please go away and cry my beloved is away from me and your cry aggravates my pain of separation a peacock has perched on my door peg perch is the sitting at the highest point a peacock has perched on my door peg where does he cry why does the peacock perch on my door peg cry why does the peacock perch on my door peg cry the peacock has perch on my head ornaments there he cries or my nose ring dances carrying away the hearts of the people why does the peacock cry why does the peacock perch on my door peg and cry my sari dances in the air carrying the hearts of the people my sari dances in the air carrying the hearts of the people why does the peacock cry why does the peacock cry so that's that's the message she's trying to give so i'm trying to sing the duha first he मतलब मतलब मोरला हे लव तू आगो जा एक तो ओढो अनहर जुर रे हे अरे माथे जो मरे टुडले बैठो रे मोर क्या बोले मरे टुडले बैठो रे मोर क्या बोले मोर क्या बोले मोर क्या बोले मरे टुडले बैठो रे मोर क्या बोले मारा है रहा रोहर मारा दल डल राल जनावर जीवता जाल्या रे मोर क्या बोले मोर क्या बोले मोर क्या बोले मारे टुडले बैठो रे मोर क्या बोले मारे कम के बैठो रे मोर क्या बोले मारी चुंदड़ी लड़ा लर जनावर जीवता जाल्या रे मोर क्या बोले मोर क्या बोले मोर क्या बोले मारे टुडले बैठो रे मोर क्या बोले मारे कडले बैठो रे मोर क्या बोले सन एंकलेट्स बाई कडले बैठो रे मोर क्या बोले मारी का बुले ला रे जनावर जीवता जाल्या रे मोर क्या बोले मोल क्या बोले मोर क्या बोले मारे सब फोर बिट्स मारे तुडले बैठो रे मोर क्या बोले मारे 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 टू थ्री फोर मारे टोडले मारे टोट्स इट थैंक यू थैंक यू नाउ वी विल गो टूअर साउथ इंडिया मिस गीता पाटिल पोएट एंड प्रोफेशनल विल सिंग अ कन्नड़ फोक सॉन्ग 
and namaskar everyone um i'm from karnataka and i'm going to sing a kannada song um but before that as an introduction i want to tell you that this is um about a bangle seller and a newly married girl that conversation goes in between these two that you know like as she was as uh you know like you know bharatiya folk songs they are full of emotions so when uh, the newly married girl goes and stays with her in-laws she remembers very often her uh, family her siblings her relatives villagers friends and uh, she cherishes those memories in her you know during her transition time and uh, um and she wants to send message but in olden days there were no carriers or telephones or emails so the local vendors they used to provide the messenger or you know carrying message to their different places in the village they used to provide that service so when she meets this um, bengal seller she becomes so happy and she asks that bengal seller you know like a my mom loves these glass bangles why don't you carry these to my village and uh, give some to my mom so when he asked the bengal seller asked for her the address of her parents house um, and what do, how to get to her village so she gives a vague um, address in the beginning and in the poem he asks very specifications how to get to your village first and how to identify your house and after identifying in the house you know there are so many ladies and how can i identify your mom then she describes you know step by step how to get there and on the way uh, what all he finds and then how to identify her house and identify his mom and sell the bangles to her so before uh, this thing you will see like in you know, the village full of trees full of uh, you know plantations uh, you know and then you see the birds chirping and all that bhagya da pale kara hogi banantavarige ಭಾಗ್ಯದ ಪಳೆಗಾರ ಹೋಗಿ ಬಾನಂತವರಿಗೆ ಭಾಗ್ಯದ ಪಳೆಗಾರ ಹೋಗಿ ಬಾನಂತವರಿಗೆ ಭಾಗ್ಯದ ಪಳೆಗಾರ ಹೋಗಿ ಬಾನಂತವರಿಗೆ ನಿನ್ನ ತವರೂರ ನಾನೇನು ಬಲ್ಲೇನು ನಿನ್ನ ತವರೂರ ನಾನೇನು ಬಲ್ಲೇನು ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಎನಗೆ ಗುರಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಎಲೆ ಬಾಲೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಎನಗೆ ಗುರಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಎಲೆ ಬಾಲೆ ತೋರಿಸು ಬಾರೆ ತವರೂರ ತೋರಿಸು ಬಾರೆ ತವರೂರ ಭಾಗ್ಯದ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ಹೋಗಿ ಬಾನಂತವರಿಗೆ ಭಾಗ್ಯದ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ಹೋಗಿ ಬಾನಂತವರಿಗೆ ಬಾಳೆ ಬಲಕ್ಕೆ ಇಡು ಸೀಬೆ ಎಡಕ್ಕೆ ಬಿಡು ಬಾಳೆ ಬಲಕ್ಕೆ ಬಿಡು ಸೀಬೆ ಎಡಕ್ಕೆ ಬಿಡು ನಟ್ಟ ನಡುವೇಲಿ ನೀ ಹೋಗು ಬಳೆಗಾರ ನಟ್ಟ ನಡುವೇಲಿ ನೀ ಹೋಗು ಬಳೆಗಾರ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೂದೆನ್ನ ತವರೂರು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೂದೆನ್ನ ತವರೂರು ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಎಲೆ ಎಣ್ಣೆ ತೋರು ಬಾ ನಿಂತವರೂರು ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಎಲೆ ಎಣ್ಣೆ ತೋರು ಬಾ ನಿಂತವರೂರು ಹಂಚಿನ ಮನೆ ಕಾಣೋ 
ಕಂಚಿನ ಕದ ಕಾಣೋ ಹಂಚಿನ ಮನೆ ಕಾಣೋ ಕಂಚಿನ ಕದ ಕಾಣೋ ವಿಂಚಾಡೋ ಎರಡು ಗಿಣಿ ಕಾಣೋ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ಇಂಚಾಡೋ ಎರಡು ಗಿಳಿ ಕಾಣೋ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೂದೆನ್ನ ತವರೂರು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೂದೆನ್ನ ತವರೂರು ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಎಲೆ ಹೆಣ್ಣೆ ತೋರು ಬಾ ನಿಂತವರೂರು ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಎಲೆ ಹೆಣ್ಣೆ ತೋರು ಬಾ ನಿಂತವರೂರು ಆಲೆ ಆಡು ತಾವೆ ಗಾಣ ತಿರುಗುತ್ತಾವೆ ಆಲೆ ಆಡು ತಾವೆ ಗಾಣ ತಿರುಗುತ್ತಾವೆ ನವಿಲು ಸಾರಂಗ ನಲಿದಾಳ್ವೆ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ನವಿಲು ಸಾರಂಗ ನಲಿದಾಳ್ವೆ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೂದೆನ್ನ ತವರೂರು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೂದೆನ್ನ ತವರೂರು ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಎಲೆ ಹೆಣ್ಣೆ ತೋರು ಬಾ ನಿಂತವರೂರು ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಎಲೆ ಹೆಣ್ಣೆ ತೋರು ಬಾ ನಿಂತವರೂರು ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಹಟ್ಟೀಲಿ ಮುತ್ತಿನ ಚಪ್ರ ಹಾಕಿ ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಹಟ್ಟೀಲಿ ಮುತ್ತಿನ ಚಪ್ರ ಹಾಕಿ ನಟ್ಟ ನಡುವೆಲಿ ಅಡುತ್ತಾಳೆ ಪಗಡಿಯ ನಟ್ಟ ನಡುವೆಲಿ ಪಗಡಿಯ ಅಡುತ್ತಾಳೆ ಅವಳೆ ಕಣೋ ನನ್ನ ಹಡೆದವ್ವ ಅವಳೆ ಕಣೋ ನನ್ನ ಹಡೆದವ್ವ ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಎಲೆ ಹೆಣ್ಣೆ ತೋರು ಬಾ ನಿಂತವರೂರ ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಎಲೆ ಹೆಣ್ಣೆ ತೋರು ಬಾ ನಿಂತವರೂರು ಅಚ್ಚ ಕೆಂಪಿನ ಬಳೆ ಹಸಿರು ಗಿರಿನ ಬಳೆ ಅಚ್ಚು ಕೆಂಪಿನ ಬಳೆ ಗಿ ಹಸಿರು ಗಿರಿನ ಬಳೆ ನನ್ನ ಹಡದವ್ವಗೆ ಪಲು ಆಸೆ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ನನ್ನ ಹಡದವ್ವಗೆ ಪಲು ಆಸೆ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ಕೊಂಡೋಗು ನನ್ನ ತವರಿಗೆ ಕೊಂಡೋಗು ನನ್ನ ತವರಿಗೆ ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಎಲೆ ಹೆಣ್ಣೆ ತೋರು ಬಾ ನಿಂತವರೂರು ಮುತ್ತೈದೆ ಎಲೆ ಹೆಣ್ಣೆ ತೋರು ಬಾ ನಿಂತವರೂರು ಭಾಗ್ಯದ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ಹೋಗಿ ಬಾ ನಂತವರಿಗೆ ಭಾಗ್ಯದ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ಹೋಗಿ ಬಾ ನಂತವರಿಗೆ ಭಾಗ್ಯದ ಬಳೆಗಾರ ಹೋಗಿ ಬಾನಂತವರಿಗೆ ನಾವು ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆನಂದ್ ರಾಮಾನುಜನ್ ಪೋಯಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಷನಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಕುರುವ ಫೋಕ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ ವಣಕಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆನಂದ್ ರಾಮಾನುಜನ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಮೀನ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಮೈ ಪೋಯಮ್ ಟುಡೇ from the great beautiful karnataka i am going to take you down down south south uh, tamil nadu to the cool uh, lush uh, mountains of kutralam so this kutralam um, is actually a mountain range in the western ghats uh, bordering tamil nadu and kerala and uh, this is also uh, famous for beautiful waterfalls thundering waterfalls called five falls uh this uh, kutralam is a scene of our song today so the next next slide please so now we have established the scene of our song so who is going to perform the song the kuravas of kutralam the kuravas of kutralam are ethnic tamil community who are basically hunters and gatherers um but they are also excellent musicians uh, drum, uh dancers and even palm readers So uh this uh, song which I'm going to present today is actually sung by a Kurava woman uh, called uh, Kurathi. So next slide please. Uh now we have established the where and the who now what. So what what is the subject of our poem? So the poem is centered on the greatness of Tamil itself. Uh this uh, the song uh, elaborates tamil languages rich cultural heritage 
as well as its poetic eminence and its ancient origin and also its uh, power, world changing power of its words. Um, so if, if you can notice, every, every, li every line of this poem ends with a refrain, Ame, uh, which generally means, O oh Mother, but in this particular context, it is exclamation of a joy. So having introduced the scene, as well as the performance, the performance and the uh, short summary of the subject itself, uh, let me proceed to the actual poem itself, as sung by a Kurati from Kutralam. Tamilin Serappu, Uru Kuravanji Pattu, Thiruvadi Yai Kuraladigal Kundamuli Yamme, Silambuliyal Aram Vilanga Nindramuli Yamme, Yeri Kadirai Madamayirul Vendramuli Yamme, Yedil Madipol Kanivutarum Inba Muli Yamme. So this stanza, as with every um, great work which we uh, start, it uh, comes with an uh, invocation to a deity. And the deity which we are going to invocate here is Mother Tamil herself. So we are seeing uh, the couplets of Kural are on the divine feet of Mother Tamil. Kural here denotes to Tirukural, the great Tamil treatise on the art of living. Uh, the next line talks about another great uh, Tamil literary work. In fact, it is one of the five great uh, epics in Tamil. It's called Silapadigaram. Uh, it's called in the, uh, it's called the Lay of the Anklet. So the tinkle, a small sound of the tinkle, tinkle of the la, la, Lay of the Anklet shines light, right in the right yes, right yes, um, Because it teaches, it upholds moral values and uh, establishes order in the world. That's the main moral message of the lay of the anklet. The great words of Tamil subdue the darkness of ignorance as if they were the light of the sun. Also, they give delight as the cool rays of the moon. So the first stanza essentially summarizes uh, the Tamil language's uh, multiple uh, qualities, the coolness, the radiance, as well as its literary eminence. So let us go to the second stanza of the uh, poem. Kadalu lagin murigalile mutta muri amme, kala melam sirilamai putta muri amme, mudi udaya mu arasar potru muri amme, murasadira changa melam vitra muri amme. So our Tamil. Um, of course, it is most ancient among all languages in the world. Um, but if you see, it is also very fresh and new, like blossoming flower. And uh, the reason is because it was, from the ancient times, it was patronized by great rulers, uh, like the three great, great rulers, Chola, Chera, and Pandya kings. Uh, in addition to that, it has decorated the land academies called Sangam, uh, from time to time, even the fourth Sangam was recent years only. So, because of this, it is always maintaining its youth and integrity and the, uh, uh, the, uh, the freshness. So, next slide, please. So, the third stanza, let us uh, sing and uh, observe. Pubi Magira Kabi Padaita Kamban Muri Amme. Pugarendi Nalan Kadaya Chonna Muri Ame, Suvayoda Nor Namulirum, Opil Muri Ame, Tondrumada Unmayalam, Seppu Muri Ame. So this, this stanza also describes two great poets. The first line describes um, the greatness of Kamban, who is, of course, an emperor among poets because he wrote uh, a magnum opus called uh, Kamba Ramayanam, which is the story of uh, Lord Rama one of the incarnations of Lord Vishnu in the Hindu pantheon. Um, so he, uh, it, was, it was written in a very delightful, uh, poetic um, uh, eminence, uh, mag magnificence. So this um, first, um, first line and the second line are really connected with each other because these, the poets on the uh, Kamban and the next 
um, the, uh, the, the, the poet which is mentioned in the second line, which is spoken in the or contemporaries, and they all share the same greatness because they, they, um, uh, they wrote, they transformed um, the language, the, uh, the stories from another language, Sanskrit to Tamil, in a beautiful meter called uh, Viratham and Venba. So the, um, the, the second uh, line uh, also says about, uh, it is uh, uh, the Naland's uh, story. Who is Nalan? Nalan is a, is a king from North India who ruled with uh, righteousness and moral values. And uh, let us move on uh, to the fourth line, which is it. Uh, it, it, it also expounds the greatness of all religions and philosophies, however complex they are. It uh, explains it and details it in a way that is understandable uh, by everyone. And let us move on to the fourth uh, stanza. Bharati in teni sayal sirkumuri amme, pavendar puttulagun dakkumuri amme, erudaya ulavar pugal satrumuri amme, engal kula kuravar alam valtumuri amme. So here, the, it is um, mentioned like two, two modern poets are mentioned here. Bharati and, ba and Bharati Dasan, both are revolutionary poets. They transformed the mindset of Tamil people and even the whole Indian uh, um, people's mindset in the um, freedom struggle. And also, yeah, the, that, that, that stand, the, the stanza um, upheld the greatness of uh, farmers and uh, Kauravas, which are uh, uh, who, who work, work and till and toil, and also uh, like worship, worship, uh, worship Mother Tamil as well. So the last stanza talks about. Uh, let us uh, sing and uh, observe it. Anu vada nai tulai tedavum valla muri amme, aimbu da tiel bedutte chollu muri amme, unarvini le kalandamudai pongu muri amme, uyanda tani chamuriya mengal Tamil amme. So the last stanza upheld the scientific eminence of Tamil and uh, also it, um, um, uh, it describes how delightful Tamil is in addition to the wisdom it is um, expressing. And also it um, praises the classical nature of Tamil language and its exquisite beauty. And uh, yeah, the, these, uh, these are the five uh, chances which I have written today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ramarizan. That was beautiful. Now, Manorma Chaudhary, poet and writer, will sing a Kaljai Odia folk song. Good afternoon and namaste. Thank you, Anandji, for, for your beautiful Tamil rendition, and thanks to all other poets who recited before me. First of all, it's a privilege to be standing here. I express my deepest gratitude to all the poets at Sapne, Mass Cultural um, Council, Cambridge Public Library, and the wonderful audience here who have so much patience and listening carefully, intently, adding your emotions. You know, and thanks for giving me this opportunity to share a piece of my cultural heritage and folk literature. You can to the first slide, maybe. Sure. And I agree with Dr. Chun when she said, Poetry is a spoken language, spoken tradition. I will add to it, poetry is the language of heart. It touches hearts. I will be reciting uh, after north, south, east, north, south, and west, I will take you all to east today, east of India. I will be reciting an Odia 
बैलेड बाय पंडित गोदावरी शा मिश्रा इट्स नेम इज काली चाय ही वाज एन एजुकेटर हिस्टोरियन पोइट राइटर एडिटर ओराटर पॉलिटिशियन एंड अ सोशल रिफॉर्मर हु स्टूड अगेंस्ट कैस्ट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन ही रिसीव्ड केंद्र साहित्य अकादमी अवार्ड in 1961 before reciting the poem let me also take you all to uh, let me share a few facts about odisha so next slide please as you can see in the map oh, where the india map on there odisha is located on the east coast of indian subcontinent the primary language spoken is odia It is the first Indian state formed based on language in April 1936. Odia is the only North Indian language that received classical status. Odisha is known for its maritime trade, Bali Jatra, sailing overseas for over 2000 years. Odisha is known for its rich cultural history literature breathtaking natural landscape temple architecture rich mineral resources and traditional handloom what i'm wearing today the tagline for this eastern state is india's best kept secret and lord jagannath is the presiding deity he is considered the heart and soul of odisha Now my, now my poem Kali Jai is based on a folk tale of a bride named Jai. Her in-laws live in a far-off village. In order to reach there, she has to cross a huge lake. So before reciting the poem, I would also like you all to make familiar with the Chilika Lake. Next slide, please. So we will be sailing through this poem. Chilika Lake is one of the natural beauties that Odisha brags about. Many epics are written on it. It is the largest brackish water lagoon in Asia and the longest largest in the second largest in the world. The lake spreads over 1100 square kilometers flowing into the Bay of Bengal. According to a survey, the ecological richness of the lake supports 726 species of flowering plants 323 aquatic species and 150000 fishermen from nearby villages during winter months about 160 species of migratory birds in millions find chilika lake to be their home Major tourist attraction in and around the lake are Satapada, Mangal Jodi, Kali Jai Temple, Nalabana Bird Sanctuary. The poem I chose today, Kali Jai, is based on the folk tales behind the Kali Jai Temple. You can do the next slide, please. Returning to the poem, it narrates a tragic story of Jai. She is sailing with her father to go to her husband's home. on her way she is bidding farewell to all familiar landmarks that she may not see again in her lifetime i have kept only a very brief summary there because it's a very long poem and i have picked up very few stanzas just to cover the story so in between i will give a little narration this kind of song is often sung during the farewell ceremony of a girl's marriage The lyrical poem with its sad undertone makes it a ballad. I will only recite few stanzas to demonstrate its lyrical composition and the emotion of the poem. Hope I will do justify to its poignancy. I'm not a singer. Bhola kori na buhare na uri झीब सासू घर 
The father is saying, O oh boatman, row gently. My daughter is going to, a, to her in-laws and also scared of traveling first time. Nauri bapuda katamaru achi uda sega uchi gita Nauri jai pavano prayelo jona na pada ibato Ma bhoni ko sati sanga Jiyo jiyo si chichadi Nare basi jitan kori kothalo Nare basi jitan kori kothalo Hue niran thara bhali Thinking she will never see her dear ones in this lifetime again Jai is profusely crying. Parikuda boli rai ja puni se chili ka maji re kahi ke monte mur chila chia kuba kahe ke monte mur chila chia kuba kahe ete duri. This is really sad, thinking why her parents sending her to Parikuda, such a far of land. Na chali achi pabana samane, na mane pani pathara, tu ni hua jai na kandha. Nauri is saying, we are almost there, don't cry. Bhaleri si kharu kala megha khande Uthei asi la kahu Luchi gale tahi surja deba talo Khara na pada iya all of a sudden, the sun disappeared, furious winds, dark clouds, and the torrential rain, and there comes a severe storm. The boat got capsized. Unfortunately, Jai drowned. Kete sabara sa helani se dinu gani ki kahi baki Eka hoi jai loki ko hanti lo Eka hoi jai loki ko hanti lo Se pahade bulu thai Se pahade bulu thai Years gone by, no one found her body. So people think she is still alive. So that was my short poem, like I only took very few stanzas. But the tragic story is remembered even today by Odia folks. Because her body was never found, people believed she was the goddess Kali herself, who now lives on Kalijai rock in the middle of Chilika Lake. Later, people built a temple in her name, which is now a famous landmark in Odisha. The water is often turbulent near the island. It is believed that she helps those who pray during crossing the lake. Even I remember going to temple 
There is a point one will feel that eerie silence because everybody will be quiet and praying her. That was my poem. And the painting that you see, that is my humble effort to capture the beauty of Chilika. And once again, thank you all. And I would like to especially thank Dr. Vijay Mishra for his dedication and perseverance to bring the South Asian culture to forefront. Thank you very much. Wow, that was so emotional. Thank you so much, Ms. Chaudhary. I really enjoyed it. But now, last, not the least, Mr. Rahul Ray, poet and teacher, will bring us to Bengal folk song. Thank you, Rita. Namaskar. Uh, uh, may I have the first slide, slide please? Okay. Next one. So, uh, actually, Shajid, uh, Dr. Shajid Kamal made my life much simpler. He introduced Bengal, he introduced the language Bengali, which is the language of the northeastern part, really above Orisha, is Bengal, and also the land of Bangladesh, which is a sovereign country. And also, he introduced uh, Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. Uh, why did I choose this particular song? I'll come to that in a minute. But let's talk about a little bit about Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. He was everything. Whatever he touched, he can go like the Midas touch. Whatever he was a painter, he was, he was known for doing anything and everything and did it with a great stride. Anyhow, so I'm going to, next one, please. Uh, sing a song by him. This is a map of Bangladesh and West Bengal. We already seen this before. Let's move on to the next one. So we have done enough talking, so I won't do very much of that. So this is, I'm just going to read this poem by Tagore, first in Beng Bangla, and then my translation next to it, and then I'll sing the song. The first thing is, why did I choose this song? It is not exactly a folk uh, poetry, but this is in the style of the folk poetry. It's actually a Baal style, but it's a highly spiritual song. I'll read that in Bengali first. Tomar khola hawa lagiye pale, tukro kore kachi ami dubde raji achi. Shokal amar gyalo miche, bikel jijay tari piche go. Ekho naay aar, bedho naar, kuler kacha kachi, ami dubde raji achi. Majir lagi achi jagi, shokol ratri bela, dheu gulo je amay niye kore kebol khela. Jhar ke ami korbo mite, Dorbonatar Drukutite, Dao Chire Dao Go, Ami Tufan Felebachi, Ami Dub De Rajiachi. Next slide. So I'm going to sing that song. It will be much easier for you to follow the song if it's in English, because a lot of people don't forget that our brother understands Bengali. And I think I should be here.
আমার খোলা লাগিয়ে পালে তোমার খোলা টুক করে কাছি আমি ডুব দে রাজে আছি আমি ডুব দে রাজে আছি তোমার খোলা হাওয়া লাগিয়ে পালে তোমার খোলা হাওয়া আমার গেল মিছে বিকেল যে যায় তারি পিছে গো সকাল আমার গেল মিছে বিকেল যে যায় তারি পিছে গো রেখো না বেধো না কুলের কাছা কাছি আমি ডুব দে রাজে আছি আমি ডুব দে রাজে আছি তোমার খোলা হাওয়া লাগিয়ে পালে তোমার খোলা হাওয়া আছি জাগে সকাল রাত্রি বেলা ঢেউগুলো যে আমায় নিয়ে করে কেবল খেলা মাঝের লাগে আছি জাগে সকাল রাত্রি বেলা ঢেউগুলো যে আমায় নিয়ে করে কেবল খেলা ঝড়কে আমি করব নিতে টরব না তার ভ্রুকুটিতে ঝড়কে আমি করব নিতে টরব না তার ভ্রুকুটিতে তাও ছেড়ে দাও ও গো আমি তুফান ফেলে বাঁচি আমি ডুব দে রাজে আছি আমি ডুব দে রাজে আছি তোমার খোলা হাওয়া লাগিয়ে পালে তোমার খোলা হাওয়া টুক করে কাছি আমি ডুব দে রাজে আছি আমি ডুব দে রাজে আছি তোমার খোলা হাওয়া তোমার খোলা হাওয়া bag that we created we are india discovery center so this bags we have so people can pick up a bag if you like it's like a book bag and we normally we had a book published that we gave in this book we don't have any copies anymore oh. we're printing them we'll give them but anyway here dr Wu. thank you anyway, thank you so much yeah thank so you. come here and then yeah. Okay. I'm honored. Thank you so much. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. I I have to say I discovered today I thought 
before every Indian person can dance. Today I discovered every Indian person can sing. I am just so impressed. Thank you all so much. So I didn't sing. Can I sing the mm, Jasmine song no, for you guys? No, no, no. <laughs> so I mean, at least one Chinese person can sing. You can see. <laughs> so the ja Jasmine flower. <clears throat> 好一朵美丽的... Oh, um. <laughs> Okay. 好一朵美丽的茉莉花茉莉花呀又白又像惹人爱，让我和来把你摘下，送给别人戴。茉莉花呀，茉莉花，茉莉花呀，茉莉花。Thank you. This song actually, I think that she actually from China, from Taiwan, but this one is kind of popular in both. Places. This gives yeah, an opportunity to thank yeah. this gentleman. Huh? <laughs> he is the he one, <laughs> just like the our uh, the Chun Yu friend. He sort up the first seminar we did for India Discovery Center. Wow! Yeah. India Discovery Center in the 2016. 2016, yeah. 2016 July. In Lexington. July. I didn't tell people it was my birthday because I thought I was trying to see whether we can make this India discovery move. I chose July 23. I'm watching for the people who will sew up. This man sews up. No, oh, it's just by accident. I, I he, doesn't, he doesn't know it. I don't know. I just say, oh, and India. then he takes pictures. He sits through the whole time. And ever since, he has been coming to all our events. For this event, I said, would you sing Chinese? Oh. And he says, I'm not a singer, I don't do it. <laughs> but he came today and he took, he takes pictures all the time. Would you think Chow Chin? Um, Arun, Arundhati. Arundhati, so she has a, she's a dancer. Let us see what she, how she can wrap up. Can you have something to wrap it up? To come. Do come, do come, do come. And then we can take all people stay on, we take a group picture as he says, and you can all take a bag from India Discovery Center. I have to thank Rita Pandey for having helped out all the slides. And... Okay, here is the dance, folk dance from India. Arundhati Circle. Thank you, it's an honor. I just came and Vijay just said, if you like to do something, welcome. So, uh, I'm going to sing a little song. The song was and still a very popular Bengali folk song. I learned this song and dance almost 50 years ago. And it still stay with me. Uh, main meaning of the song, Long time ago, select Bangladesh, child marriage was a very common thing. The child bride was required to dance and often questions on her skills by older women and in-laws. But the mandate was dancing. So 
when I read that and I felt at 80s, Cindy Lauper always wanted the song, the song girl wanted to have a fun. So I think it's like a very similar when we feel the girl somehow finds some kind of fun. So that's the song about it. And this is a very popular Bengali song. So the, um, it's Suhag Chand Badhani Dhani, Nacho To Dekhi, Bala Nacho To Dekhi. Nachin Bhalu Shunduriye, Banin Bhalu Chul, Helia Dulia Pare Nagkeshore Fool. So it's like um, they're trying to say the little young child bride wearing a veil and trying to open it and say, It's a fun song and that. So I'm going to show you, it's like a Shohag chan badhani dhani nacho to dekhi Shohag chan badhani dhani nacho to dekhi Mala nacho to dekhi Mala nacho to dekhi Mala nacho to dekhi Shohag chan badhani dhani nacho to dekhi Mala nacho to dekhi, mala nacho to dekhi. Jamun nachin na gurka nai, temni nachin nai. Jamun nachin na gurka nai, temni nachin nai. Ekbar nachia bulao to dekhi, na gurka nai. Mala nacho to dekhi, shuhag chan baduni dhuni, nacho to dekhi. Mala nacho to dekhi, mala nacho to dekhi, shuhag chan maduni dhuni nacho to dekhi. Thank you. So, given all the people who are beside the audience, I give it a little clap. Then, I will, from the tradition of India, we have the Vedas, so I will sing one line. I'd like you to all, I'll tell you why I'm doing this. It's not easy, but people thought that people think equal. So the meaning of this stanza would be that, that let us have similar thoughts. So, I'll say it word by word. Say, sham, sham, gachat dhum, gachat dhum. Why it's important? This is not a language. This is meditation. That is, when you are singing, let us walk together. The sound possibly coming from the mind is sam gachadvam. How? I don't know. Say again. Sam gachadvam. Sam badadvam. Sam badadvam. Sam bo manansi. Janata Sam Bo Bo means our. Again, see, Bo is our, is later people are saying Bo is our. This is pure meditation. When you say that we are all one, we walk together, we think together, let us speak together. So that's the eternal statement coming without script, without language. So do it again. Samgachadvam sambadadvam sambomanan sijanatam. I'll stop there. Samgachadvam sambadadvam sambomanan sijanatam. Thank you all.